this is the pinout for a smart card. So you can see it's like ours. It has like a large ground pad which goes up the middle. Then we have power. Okay. We have a reset pin which is active high. So high on the resets. And then we have SCL, clock, SDA, data, and then two pins that are not used. But on later ones, we have something more like this. So this is 7816-2 standard. And this has two more data pins, which are very much like a USB channel, okay? So I was probably using something like this. Just out of interest, by the way, this is one of these data loggers I was talking to you about, the smart card interface monitor that was used in the early days of the card sharing system before basically manufacturers started building boxes that were doing, notably the Dream Box, which was developed in Germany, but others as well. And there's a picture of one, okay, if you're just interested to know what those things were like. But from this, we can have a look at our smart card. So we know it's being inserted. We know we have a good connection to the pins. So I'm interested now to know if it has power uh, and if anything is going on with the communication to the card. And there's also something else I'm interested in. So let's go back to the PCB. Let's power this up. We can check if the power rails are there. I suspect they are. Let's have a look. So we go from ground. Uh, this is ground on the smart card, so it just should just read zero. And then this is VPP, which I think is something to do with programming the card. And that's just about zero. VCC is the supply, which is this one. And that's also zero. I'm sure I'm on a good ground. I'm on a good ground, okay. Hmm, that's interesting. This is reset. This is the data. We wouldn't expect to see anything on there anyway. But it's looking like this car has no power. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, in fact, when I touch it, it actually just goes down to zero. That's interesting. We just put the capture card on. Well, at the moment, it's not actually running yet. The box is booting up. Yeah, so I have to wait until it finishes booting. Maybe that's why there's no power on the card, or appears to be. Will that come on when it boots up? Wait a little while longer. Okay, well, your system time now what? We're on a channel, smart card. And we've got no power to the smart card. Huh? Nothing. Nothing. Well, I think we found a problem. The question is, where does the power come from? Yeah. Where does the power come from? Let's have a look on one of the scrap ones. Hmm. I just moved this and the uh, heat sink fell off. I wonder if that's not been making very good contact and whether that's causing some damage to the chip i don't know exactly but i'm not sure what even would hold that on actually it looks like some sort of hard glue there's nothing else that holds it down okay let's have a look at another one like i say okay i've got another scrap box i think it's a blocked one now this one is doing what you would expect it to do if it was reading the smart card but there's no subscription on it so it's telling us that the service is currently scrambled if we go to a free to air channel that will surely work i'm interested to see if this one responds properly to the remote like the other one was kind of like waiting for something it would seem so press okay it reacts straight away 
see your order. Uh, yeah, you see this one is responding to the remote exactly as you would expect. It's not taking several seconds every time you press a button. I think we can probably find some free to air channel. Yeah, I'm on a free to air channel there. So it's obviously working and it's responding. We can have a look on this one and we can see what voltage is going to the card. I'll just go back to one of the sports channels again, which has no subscription, obviously. Okay. Let's have a look at this one and see if we have a supply voltage getting to the card. I'm just trying to figure out which way up it is. Yeah, so this end pin here should be the power. In actual fact, let's have a look. And we have five volts to the card. So this one has power to the card. So where does the power come from? Let's have a look on the other one. Well, the power is on this pin, or should be, but it isn't. And this sort of comes down this track here. We have two capacitors. This side, I'm sure, will be ground. And it goes up here, along here, and disappears in the board there. So where's this go? Mm. Well, it's a bit hard to see exactly which track it comes through, but it comes through somewhere in the region of this chip, somewhere here. Okay, and this thing is TDA 8024TT. Let's have a look at that, see if we can find a data sheet and see if that would be anything that might be related, like something that generates power or something, maybe. Let's have a look. Well, it seems to be something even more interesting than, than that because it's an IC card interface. Okay, I can see T, I can't see TT, but I can see T, which must be basically the same sort of thing. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah. IC card interface. Ah, three or five volt supply for the card. Uh, that's the first thing it tells us. So this does generate the power to the card. It has a power supply voltage itself up to 6.5 volts. It generates the output, which is no doubt set by something. There is a block diagram. Okay. Horsec. Okay various other things so this talks to the card definitely it has a pin out so we can see yeah card supply so we have that missing vddp is the dc to dc converter power supply voltage is that the supply to this chip oh, this chip has a vcc that's the supply to the card it has a crystal oscillator, let's see. So where's this chip's power ground? This one. So pin 21 powers the chip. Okay. Which is, well, it's there in the middle of the chip, basically. Yeah, this is 14 pins each side. So pin 21, I'm sure we can find that. So we can check if our chip has any power. That's the first thing we should check, at least. Yeah, that's the same on all the various versions of it. Oh! Yeah, it tells us the power supply, what it should be, the converter. Yeah, we know about this. And we have... Lots of graphs in active mode. Activation sequence. Oh, this is nice. So it actually tells us if the card is in the reader while well, we know it's triggering the switch. Then the microcontroller. This must tell the microcontroller, I'm guessing, or the microcontroller itself knows the presence is there. You can check that on the pinout for this. Yeah, and it tells you what it kind of does. Okay, the sequence. So we can look at all that. A nice little diagram. 
But I think what we should do with this is let's see if this chip's got power. And if it has got power, and we know the car doesn't have power, let's swap the chip with the one off the scrap one. If it still doesn't work, then we can go into the sequences and see if we can figure out why it doesn't work. Oh, and the present, not present thing, that's also on the chip as well, so we can see where that comes from. Okay, so let's check the power supply. If it's got one, let's swap the chip and let's see what happens then. Okay, so here's the chip, uh, 14 pins, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 is that one. So if that goes somewhere around here it's probably one of these capacitors or something let's have a quick look no 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 these, what about these things goes there goes there it's not shorted to ground is it let's just check so there to ground so it's not shorted to ground but we can say that this voltage rail here is supply voltage so we can check there and that's easy to get on without slipping without probing the pin itself okay let's see if our chip's got any power i'll have to find a way to reattach this heat sink but for the amount of time i'm gonna have this switched on i don't think it's gonna be a problem so where was that power yeah it was on this rail here so we'll just switch on and we'll have a look switch on there's a thing powering up. Yeah. I'm going to have a 3.3 volt supply on there. Okay, 3.3. What did the data sheet say? Well, it says 2.7 to 6.5. So we can assume that is correct. So the chip has power. So the next thing I'm going to do now is just literally just swap it off the other PCB. Okay, here's a scrap one. The thing's right down there. So I'm actually going to see if I can get the heat sink off this one. Yeah, it came off easy enough. So we'll add some flux. There's components all around this, so there's no particularly easy way to grab hold of it because there's always a risk of it sliding. But I think. I'll try and grab hold of it from this end. So if it goes that way, there's just two capacitors that it might hit. Yeah. Seems like the area where we like to cause the least damage if we cause any. So we'll down here like this. Uh, okay, so let's uh, do this. Just added some welded solder. I can put the chip quick on, but yeah, actually, not quite sure where I've put it. It's around here somewhere. Uh, let's get some of this on, be fine. Okay. That'll do. That'll move around that heated up. Other side. Okay, so let's see how easy or difficult this is to desolder without melting the card holder. Yeah, I want to slide it kind of that way. Okay, let's see. I mean, when I say I want to slide it, I don't want to slide it at all, but if it does slide, I want it to move that way. Okay. And I want to heat it in this sort of direction as well. Uh, this is going to be quite awkward to lift, I can just tell. I know it actually wasn't bad.
Well, it's sort of maybe just cleans up a little bit if I can, yeah. Okay. I'm not worried about a few solder bridges, they're going to get soldered down anyway, and then we can worry about them. But if we can just tie this a little bit down well. Okay. As I say, not too worried. Leave it. So that's the good one. Just so we don't get these things mixed up at all, I'm just going to put an X on that one. I know which card it is because it says under the box, but we may as well put uh, an X on the card as well. Okay. No mixing them up. Right. So, same thing again. Okay. Almost. Oh. I think I was lucky there not to lift a pad or two because it kind of like happens on solder at one end, but I think I got away with it. Looks good. So I'll now solder the other one back into place. I will do this under the optical microscope, it's just much easier for me. Okay guys, sorry I forgot to hit record, but I've just tagged it down, there was enough solder to hold it. Basically I didn't have to add any more, I might need a little bit in one corner by the looks of it. Yeah, this pin here at the end, now it's alright now. So I'll clean the flux off and let's have a look. Okay. You can easily test if these pins are actually soldered. A bit closer. Yeah, that looks good, other side. So just get to the focus, water is slightly. Okay, see. How does that look on the screen? That looks good. Okay, let's try it. We know where to check if the card has any power, so. We can power this up and let's have a look. Put the capture card on so we can see what it's doing as well. So power up. 
Well, the green light's all on the box, that's a start. What have we got? Okay, so we still have no power to the card. Yeah. Even after changing that chip. So I'll just wait till it boots up just to be certain. Oh hang on, something's happening. We do have power to the card. Let's see what it does. Okay, smart card not available. Ah, and it's put the card number, so it now sees the card. So it's a matter now of leaving it for a while. That not available will go away. That's what they do. If I leave this switched on for a while, hopefully it will pick up an update and start working. The question is, what do I glue that back down with? Yeah, I'll take a bit of lunch, leave this on, and let's see if it does actually start to decode. 